everybody. I'm Aaron Simmons. This is Philosophy for Where We Find Ourselves, August 4th, 2021. Although psychologists and psychiatrists and neuroscientists have spent a lot of time and a lot of effort studying stress, this is not something that I think has received enough philosophical attention. This is on my mind currently because I'm stressed out. I've kind of hit a wall of uh, not being able to work hard enough to push through. As you can see, I'm out uh, doing some mountain biking today uh, up by a mountain lake just to clear my head to get away for a little while. And that helps. But I wonder what philosophy offers in these times of stress. And if you know of philosophers that have written books or essays on this, please comment. Give me, give me suggestions of where I can go and look. But three things jump out to me as philosophical responses to being stressed out. The first is work the problem. This is an idea that I picked up from a professor of mine at Florida State University who taught me a modern logic course. And that was not an easy course, y'all, let me tell you. In that course, we would do a lot of logical proofs and uh, try to you know, move through these using the rules of logic. Well, it was often the case that you would hit a step where you didn't know what to do next. And his suggestion was always, do something. <laughs> what is available to be done? What can you do? What logical rule can you apply? It may not get you where you're trying to go, but at least it gets you somewhere else. And then you can figure out maybe something else will open from there. So work the problem. What can you do when you feel like you can't do anything? For me, that was going mountain biking today because I couldn't do anything to solve the stressor so I decided to do something else, and then maybe I can get back to that step and now see a different way forward. The second philosophical thing about handling stress that I think might be helpful is the idea of remembering that finitude means that there is a limit not only to problems, but also to any attempt to solve them. In other words, don't get overwhelmed by the fact that you aren't infinite, that you aren't God. It sometimes can be exhausting to realize that our limitations often cause us stress. But it's also freeing to remember that our limitations are what make possible the sorts of lives that we live, full of meaning, joy, beauty. So don't forget that you're finite. Give yourself a break. Cut yourself some slack. And third... And this one might seem a little bit strange, is we are autonomous beings. We are free, at least to some extent, and I'm not going to get into the debates of determinism and free will, though I side with uh, libertarianists, I think we are radically free. But if you are free to some extent, then that means that you can see things differently. This is a kind of hermeneutic freedom, we might say. The, the freedom to interpret things otherwise. Now, that doesn't solve the problem, but it might allow you to be able to take stock of where you are so that you've got different kinds of resources and strength to be able to approach the problem. So maybe those three things are helpful for you. I'm trying to draw on them in my own life right now. Work the problem. Try that logical rule. See where it gets you. And if it doesn't get you where you want to go, try a different one. Two, you are finite. Cut yourself some slack. And third, interpretive freedom is real. Look at things differently. I hope this encourages you forward. I need the encouragement, and so I often make these videos speaking to myself, but maybe it speaks to you as well. I'll see you next time, unless a piano falls on our heads.